to another Sci-Fi Fantasy Saturday. And this Saturday is also a special day in that it's Holy Saturday, the time between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And with that, I thought, let's have some coffee with Kilroy as well to, you know, which I normally do a page turn. And today I pulled out Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, which states, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understand as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put childish things away. Now, why did I pull that pas uh, passage out today of all days? Well, my son is uh, finishing up his junior year in high school. He's going to be a senior next year. And over the last couple of summers, we've been doing college trips because uh, he's going to be going off to college. He's got his, after his senior year, he's going to be going off to college. And we've been, you know, cleaning up some stuff and pulling stuff to, out of storage and trying to get a little bit organized. And the nostalgia of looking at some of the stuff that, you know, he's collected and, some of the toys and games that he's had over the years, along with, you know, the the reality of him going off to college very soon with all these trips we've been taking, uh, really kind of set in. And that, that passage of when I uh, became a man, I put away childish things, that, that uh, passage used to haunt me when I was a child because I didn't want to get away. I didn't want to give a, uh, put away my toys. I didn't want to put away my games. And, you know, if you've seen my game room, you know, I really didn't keep true to that passage in many respects. But, you know, when I was pulling out some of his toys, one of the toys that he played a lot with were G.I. Joes. And so as we were going through some of his things, I found a lot of G.I. Joes that he has collected over the years. And, you know, I was, it, it kind of, it was, it was both nostalgic and it was, it was a nice fond memory, but it was also kind of a hard memory too, of all the different, you know, stuff that, you know, when, it, when he was growing up that he used to collect and we used to play with, uh, and have generally a great time with. And, you know, the, it, 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 again, that passage kind of came to me again back when I used to fret it as a kid of when do I put away my childish things and when do we need to put away our childish things. Now, us as gamers, we rarely put away stuff, the games. Now, we could argue that war games are not that childish of, of a game. And, and 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 rationalize it that way. But from my son's perspective, you know, he doesn't play with these things anymore. Uh, but do I get rid of them? How do I get rid of them? When do my memories go away? Well, I found a solution, and that is really the part of coffee with Kilroy today in that the G.I. Joe role-playing game. So now I can still keep these G.I. Joes. When I say I, I mean, I'm keeping them for my son, right? But I can still keep these G.I. Joes, but I have a purpose for them now. The purpose is I need them for the G.I. Joe role-playing game because this is the latest role-playing game that's come out here that allows you to play in the G.I. Joe universe. So I'm going to need all these guys, right? I mean, to, to play this game. Preferably with my son. Maybe with my daughters. I don't know if they're going to get into that. They used to play a little bit with this. My, my oldest daughter played a little bit with, uh, with these with, uh, with my son. But this is the latest G.I. Joe role-playing game so get out your coffee 
Java, Juice, Joe, Soda, Pop, whatever suits your fancy. And we're going to do a quick page turn on this. This is the core rule book. And there's been a lot of G.I. Joe stuff that's coming out lately because there was also a um, G.I. Joe deck building game that came out as well. But this is put out by uh, Renegade Game Studios and Hasbro, the toy company. And what we have here is your table of contents. And I've never, uh, I don't think I've ever played, uh, I don't play a lot of role-playing games. I, I, I like collecting the stuff, but my kids and I really play role-playing games relatively sparingly. Um the some of the 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 war role playing games that I've done videos on I might mess around with those by myself uh, because you can there is a ways to to kind of do those solos but that kind of defeats the purpose of a role playing game but my kids and we've done the you know, Dungeons and Dragons and, and other stuff like this uh, other stuff uh, but I've never done a Renegade games or this system I think there's other um, themes maybe in this system. But you get your debriefing here. And I imagine that this fits into, you know, some of the similar role-playing game kind of vibes as far as you know, you're going to have some core characteristics. And this is just talking about... Uh, I guess these are specific characters that are in the G.I.J. Joe universe. And I think... My son uh, collected some of these characters over time. He was he lo he was looking at this the other day, and he was he was going, "Yeah, I got him. We got him. We got him. Pretty sure we got him. I think that's Roadblock." So uh, it looks like they're just talking about some of the characters at the beginning. Then you've got the GI Joe role playing game. So this is kind of more background at the beginning here. And talks about a game master. Then you get get right into character creation. So you have a character concept. And I don't know if uh, I really I kind of was missed the GI Joe cartoon series. I, I watched parts of it, but it was coming out right when I was going on to bigger and better things. Uh, and it uh, really wasn't around as much when my son was young, although the movies came out when he was young, and we watched some of the movies over time. So it's your influence here, hang-ups. So it's got kind of have that negative system. I can't remember which role-playing system that introduced that of having kind of positive, positive and negative things to augment your character. And then I guess these are some of their character classes, I guess. You have adventurer, artisan, athlete, checkered past, gearhead, green shirt, martial artist, nomad, professional. So quite an interesting collection there. Small town roots, specialist, thrill seeker. Then you got your origin traits here. Whether you're Army, Navy, or Air Force. And my son's going to be uh, at the West Point Leadership Camp this summer. So, uh, you know, I'm bringing this all, tying this all together. That's what I'm doing. So you got non military. And here's roll call. So this is, uh, I guess, your roles so that you're playing. So you've got kind of a background, and then you have a, a role that you're going to serve. Commando. So this might probably is more of your class. Yeah, this is your more of your class. So you've got quite a bit of backgrounds you can look at. Then you have these uh, roles or the kind of the classes and how you level up in them. And quite a lot involved and um, uh, developed on each one of these. So that was commando. Then you have infantry. And this is your level up here. And you've got some uh, role specific. I was going to say feats for those of you who are used to uh, D&D 3.0, 3.5, or Pathfinder. 
officer. So as I said, there's there's quite quite a bit of development here. And you know, this kind of fits into um one, one reason I thought I'd cover this or pick this up and cover this as well, because it kind of fits into somewhat of a one of the war game um, role playing games. I'm, I'll probably end up putting it under kind of classifying it under that. And as far as the sci fi fantasy, I mean, there's quite a bit of of kind of sci fi type themes that were in GI Joe. They they did some pretty they had some pretty incredible equipment over time. So. You know, it's not not a renegade here, not a um, not a tight fit, but it's it's a loose fit. It fits close enough for me, close enough for government work. Uh, technician there. So quite a few roles here, vanguard. So I find this interesting too, and I end up picking up a lot of uh, role playing uh, game books just. For stuff like this, because it's interesting to see the different roles and classes and characters and how they how the different systems do it and what they um, what they're focusing on. So these are your four S's. So these are your essence, skills, and specializations. So this is kind of your your core competencies. So you've got strength, speed, smarts. And social, so those are your 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 main character attributes that you're going to be using. And here's using skills. So this is laid up pretty nice. And if you like the uh, GI Joe art, you know there's quite a bit of that throughout here. Yeah, you know, there's there's the GI Joe cartoon, there's the GI Joe um, uh, comics, and then there was the movies. Here's your equipment, and this I got. I got to believe this is going to be a pretty big section since there was so much equipment over time. Here's all the weapons, and as you saw with all the stuff that was dumped on my table, we have quite a bit of vehicles as well. So quite a several charts of weapons as you would expect in a game like this. Here's battle dress, battle dress upgrades. Here's gear. So there's a lot in here. I mean, this is all is if, if anybody who's ever watched GI Joe, this is all about the gear and the weapons and the in the vehicles. Drone upgrades. Here's the vehicles. So I think we have that one. I got put that on the table. I think that's over there. So yeah, this is going to be. You know, he and I might just go through this and. With, with 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 all this stuff that I've dumped on the table and just kind of take a look at how this matches up over time and bring back some bring back some fond memories but um for me though you know nostalgia is 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 bittersweet it is uh there's a part of it that is nice to reminisce we have that right there I think that's on the table here but um you know you start getting back and thinking about you know, missed opportunities and some of the stuff you didn't do and regrets come in and I don't know, I just, it, it, it hits me like that. So this is, this is, uh, this is part of the reason to pick this up is to, you know, force myself to kind of relive and remember some of that, but also, um, you know, try to battle that. I do kind of battle the uh, nostalgia sometimes. So as you see, there's this is how this is the, the all the combat uh, rules here. So there's quite a bit of, of uh, as you would expect in a game like this. That is, you know, the whole series was based on a lot of combat. Um, quite a few rules on that. So it'd be interesting to go through that. And th this is the part where I really think overlaps with war gaming, is figuring out how they how they do combat. And you know, the D and D itself kind of came out of. Uh, was kind of the beginning of war games in some respects with Gary Gygax's uh, Chainmail was a, a medieval war game, you know, uh, kind of for miniatures, and from that evolved um, D and D, which had a lot of, you know, for its combat system and the like, was you know, inspired by you know kind of a war game field. And, and Gygax himself did war games, uh, uh, has has a few to his name. So, 
you know, this is definitely a in, in the family uh, uh, role playing um, has some of its roots here in wargaming and uh, is at least a, a close cousin or however you want to divide it up in the family. So there is quite a bit of uh, you know, several sections on combat and different types of combat and how you handle combat. Here's vehicle combat. So, you know, this is. Uh, oh, we got that's the one I put right out there. That's the one. I, put in there that's kind of cool to see that as i said uh this is this is going to serve several purposes in my, for, for me now for you your mileage may vary if you're not a gi joe fan if you're not a role-playing uh fan um if you don't have all you know all these minis uh or <laughs> i call them minis they're figures toys uh then this is probably not for you but you know you can sit here and listen to me drone on and you know with your coffee and uh, say that it may, I mean, it may, sometimes, you know, when I talk about myself and my family, I mean, it makes other people feel better. I don't know how that happens, but uh, feel better about themselves in that uh, they're not having the, the kind of plight that, uh, that, that we're living. Here's locations. Okay, that was a big key factor of, of G.I. Joe's. I mean, G.I. Joe really kind of spans both combat and military and uh, but also kind of almost a spy type situation, you know, with the adventures and the James Bond almost like where you're going to various locations and have all this great gear and gadgets and equipment. Uh, so there's, you know, kind of a crossover there. In fact, I'll probably put this either next to my war game role playing, uh, role playing games or next to my uh, spy role playing games. So you have all these different kind of Locations, there's a swamp biome, forest biome, and talks a little bit about it, and plot seeds. This is kind of cool. So this is, you know, kind of serves as the Game Master book as well to develop those locales. Here's threats. So this is the this is the bad guys. There's Cobra High Command. Oh, I'm sure we got him somewhere here. He fell out there. You guys might be able to pick him up. I'll definitely have her somewhere. I think that's that guy right there. There we go. Look at that. It's awesome. So um, that was always my favorite bag. I I ended up playing the bad guy all the time. So these are all the different bad guys in here. Um, I was ended up playing the bad guys with my son, and so uh, I, I I always got I, I always got that guy. So. And this is how Cobra is laid out, the Cobra Core. So this has quite a quite a bit of stuff in here, um, and so I'm not even not even all the way through. Look at that. Let's do a quicker. So it looks like this one here is talks more about running a mission. Looks like th this has actually has some actual. Um, threats in here so yeah everything you would expect yeah there's a mercenary so everything you would expect in a um in a gi joe role-playing game everything you wanted and and uh didn't know to ask all right um so i thought i'd just do a quick page through of that um and also you know, have you guys help me out with some of our spring cleaning as we're going through some stuff, uh, and uh, just spending some time with me. So, you know, enjoy your coffee or whatever you're drinking. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, you know, think about think about the day. You know, it's a uh, holy uh, Saturday. Think about what we started off with, you know, as far as uh, putting childish things away, what does that mean to you? Um, and uh, just thought I'd put some thoughts out there for today and this, uh, this weekend. And also, as always, want to thank each of you for spending some time with me, any time with me. I know your time is precious, so any amount of time spent is greatly appreciated. Um, but, uh, you know, thought I'd do this page turn today and also, you know, give you guys some thoughts. Uh, and uh, let me know what you, let me know what you think.
about any of that stuff. I, I know you guys, most of the people are probably not interested in the G.I. Joe role-playing game. Um, I just thought it'd be interesting given my current situation. So thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.